Hello, this is Bill from Han Racecraft. And we're out here in the Han Racecraft development area in the Florida wilderness with a brand new Polaris Slingshot SLR. Of course, I'm bringing it to you with boost on it. A happy recipient of our stage two intercooled turbo system. This one's set up at a conservative seven to eight pounds of boost at this time. What we're gonna take a look at today with this beautiful new machine is turbocharger system response. Of course, we pioneered the use of the Precision 5531 turbo on these slingshots. And I chose that turbo for a variety of reasons, but primarily to suit the slingshots weight and traction capabilities, which as we know are a little limited in the traction department. So we chose a turbo that was intentionally designed to not hit too hard down low, but still deliver satisfying power across the range. Now what, of course, differentiates this centrifugal compressor on the turbocharger from the centrifugal compressor on a belt-driven supercharger is how they are driven. This is driven by otherwise wasted or spent exhaust gas energy. So kind of a free pickup of energy off of what is otherwise just thrown out the tailpipe. Whereas the belt-driven centrifugal compressors, superchargers, will take some power off the crankshaft in order to run them. Whatever power ratings they quote, you gotta add another 30, 40 horsepower to what the engine's actually having to make in order to drive that centrifugal compressor. But what we really like about the turbocharger compressor is that since it's not RPM controlled as it is with the belt driven centrifugal compressor, it is load controlled, which is to say it responds to the load or the heat being developed by the engine, the heat energy, we can actually get it to boost at a considerably lower RPM. One thing about centrifugal compressors, whether they're on a turbocharger or a supercharger, that they require a fair amount of RPM to actually get up going and making boost. Unlike roots blowers, which you're used to seeing sitting on top of V8s, big old tooth belts running those, those are considered positive displacement blowers and they make boost instantly. Not so with the belt-driven centrifugals like we see for Slingshot, which is not to say that they're not effective, but they do require quite a bit of engine RPM in order to get them up and spooling. This turbocharger, for instance, will operate at over 100,000 RPM when it's at full song. So you can see that uh, quite a bit of RPM is required to get them moving. So that being said, what we're gonna do here is look at the turbocharger's response in roll-ons and fourth gear. And we're gonna see, hey, you know, what does the turbocharger have to say about boost at low RPM? I think you'll be uh, pleased possibly even surprise. So I'm gonna set the phone down now while we get up out on the road and then we'll do these roll-ons. We're gonna do a roll-on first at 3000 RPM. Well, that took it until about 20. 
2,900 RPM from 2,500. So you're saying, okay, well, it got to full boost before 3,000 RPM that time. What'll it do from 2,000? Let's lug it and see what that turbo will do. I'll be happy to. time to show you folks that uh, boost pressure is a unique thing and turbo systems that are properly built can achieve sumptuous low-end torque and power via the fact that they can respond so well to engine load we can build full boost by 2700 rpm and uh, have great response and roll on really I like to look at it as an almost infinitely variable supercharger you control with your right foot the more you ask for, the more it has. And if you like that type of linear controllability and mid-range torque and boost, turbocharging may be your way to go. 